from clearances. According to the Washington Post, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein warned the White House two weeks ago that Kushner's security clearance would be further delayed because of, quote, significant information requiring additional investigation. Malcolm Nance and Sarah Kenzie are back with me. And joining me now is MSNBC Intel analyst and former FBI double agent Naveed Jamali. Um, Naveed, um, the idea that there was, quote, in, in additional information um, that had arisen that was delaying the security clearance process for Jared Kushner. What does that say to you? I think the fact, uh, Joy, that Jared Kushner does not have a final adjudication giving him a clearance today is probably the clearest indication of Bob Mueller's intent to look at Jared Kushner. And I'll explain that. There are two sort of tranches of clearances. There's a person who has never held a clearance before, in which case the investigation to adjudicate, to determine if that person is in fact eligible to hold a clearance, starts from the day they were born to present day. Then there's a second type of clearance. There's someone who already has a clearance and perhaps has left government office, like Chris Ray, who left government office and then came back. The investigation will then focus in the, in the interim, the time that lapsed between him having a clearance and him coming back. Jared Kushner, in order to get a clearance, the FBI would have to say that everything he has done, and let's just talk about the wave tops, meeting with Kislyak, uh, setting up, trying to set up back channels, the VEB bank meetings, the Trump Tower meetings, the fact that he owes $1.25 million, billion dollars, excuse me, on 665th Fifth Avenue. Essentially, to give him a clearance, the FBI would say, no big deal. That's what they would have to come back to give him a clearance, say it's not a risk. I do not see how the FBI is going to do that. I, and for that matter, it would mean that it would uh, preclude, I would imagine, impact uh, Bob Mueller's investigation to Kushner. If there's charges forthcoming, if someone is going to come back and charge Jared Kushner, and then he's going to say, well, hey, you cleared me to have a clearance. You said these were not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It would be an absolute uh, 180 on that. So I don't see how we can get a clearance simply because it probably means Bob Mueller's investigating him. So the interim clearance has got to go. He's got to be put in a position that doesn't require clearance. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, the fact that he doesn't draw a salary, as Sarah pointed out, hey, Guess who else draws a salary? Paul Manafort. I mean, that's not, it's not a yeah. ringing endorsement of <laughs> no, anything. No, it's not. And Malcolm, the interesting thing, so, so to that very point, um, Ted Lieu, Congressman Ted Lieu of California, uh, issued a statement about these questions about Jared Kushner in which he said the following. The questions we've been asking are pretty simple, meaning Democrats. Did he have any discussions with foreign nationals about 666 Fifth Avenue? And that means when he's jaunting around the world without his security clearance. And if so, did he discuss anything related to helping finance, purchase, or assist with the debt on 666 Fifth Avenue? The longer we wait for a response, the more it seems like Mr. Kushner, Kushner has something to hide. And Malcolm, that's in addition to the fact that he did ask for a secure communication on Russian facilities um, about we don't even know what. Is there any circumstance under which you can imagine him ever being qualified by the FBI for a security clearance? No. I think Jared Kushner is completely and totally unclearable. Again, that's a phrase I never heard in my career because people like that were fired immediately. They weren't invited in if they were unclearable. That was people who had felonies and, and investigations going on that just would not ever get them a clearance. And I, I agree with you, Joy, that one point alone, the investigation into whether Jared Kushner actually asked the Russians to use secure cryptographic systems in order to hide communications from NSA and CIA, that right there tells you he should not be anywhere near the presidential daily briefing or any top secret SCI material in the White House at all. We don't know where his loyalty lies. I'm sorry. That's just a fact. And so he should not be cleared. And after a year, I mean, he, they sh what they should do is remove him from his duties uh, where he has to have access to classified information or the president of the United States should come out and publicly state, I am going to allow him a top secret SCI clearance on the basis of the fact that I'm president of the United States and stop playing around and putting it on General Kelly. Thank you for reminding people once again, Malcolm, that it is the White House, it is the president who grants these clearances, not the FBI. The FBI makes a recommendation whether they believe this person uh, merits a clearance. It is Trump. Trump could grant him a clearance tomorrow, hand him the PDB, he could do whatever he wants. It's Trump that's not giving him the clearance. I think we need to keep emphasizing that. It's not the FBI. Sarah Kenzior, um, when Don McGon when, uh, when Rod Rosenstein, who's a deputy attorney general, went to the White House to explain to them that there's some information that was preventing the FBI from giving this gr green check mark to, um, to Jared Kushner, it's not clear that he could have even explained why to Don McGahn. Because as the chart that we just put up shows you, Don McGahn, the White House counsel, doesn't have 
a final security clearance. He's on an interim. Sarah Huckabee <laughs> Sanders is on an interim. Ivanka Trump's on an interim. Dan Scavino, who runs the White House Twitter. Don McGahn, the White House counsel, Sarah, could not have been privy to anything classified that's keeping Jared from getting clearance because he doesn't have a clearance. What kind of an insane show are we running here? That's a rhetorical <laughs> question, but feel free to answer it. <laughs> no, I mean, this is absolutely unprecedented. We've never had this many people in the White House who, who lack a security clearance. And Kushner uh, has the worst record of anybody, uh, you know, to enter this kind of position and gain this kind of access to classified information. You know, the number of things that he left off his forms in terms of, um, you know, foreign investments, in terms of meetings with foreign officials, you know, is enormous. There's nothing that compares to it. And so this is very serious. And I think they've been using the interim clearance as a way uh, to, you know, get people people like Kushner, classified information, while circumventing the very rigorous clearance process that, as Malcolm pointed out, would have normally kept him out in the first place or gotten him fired. And so one thing that I'm worried about is that, say Kushner goes, say they actually do clamp down on this, then yeah. what happens? Kushner has been there for a year. He's been getting classified information. We know he has ties to Russia, to Israel, to Saudi Arabia. We don't know what he, he's exactly doing in his position, but we know that he has, you know, these back channels and these connections and that he has information that's incredibly valuable that can be sold on a market and we know that there's a market for state secrets and so these problems with these staffers with interim clearances will affect our national security whether they're in the White House or out of it and you know um, Naveed Kushner is, is whining about his situation uh, according to the New York Times Kushner <laughs> frustrated about the security clearance issue and concerned that Mr. Kelly has targeted him personally with the directive has told colleagues at the White House that he is reluctant to give up his high-level access that feels like it makes Sarah's point. There's some reason that he wants desperately to hold on to this access. He's not getting paid for the job. But what is the risk? As somebody who has dealt with the Russians before, who has been a double agent, what is the risk of him having this high-level access without being cleared through the FBI? Well, you know, at the time when I was dealing with the Russians, the Russians knew I was applying to become an intelligence officer in the Navy. And essentially what I told the Russians was that I saw my position in that office as a way to personally enrich myself. I see an absolute one-to-one -one ratio with Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner. These are people who don't necessarily have a loyalty to the United States. They simply, Wait, I'm and they're sorry, not I'm sorry to be, can you say that again? What did you tell them? You told I them? told them when I, was, when, I was apply, when I was working for the Russians, one of the reasons they were interested in me is because I was, they knew I was going to become an intelligence officer in the United States Navy. That was one of the reasons they recruited me. And I was very clear, it was very clear, it was understood um, that I was doing that in large part, that I would have access to information that I could sell and I would be able to enrich myself. I mean, wow. that was part of the profile that I built to present to them. And I see a one-to-one -one parallel between what I presented to the Russians and someone like, like Manafort, someone like Kushner, who see their office, aren't drawing a salary, see their position as a way to personally enrich themselves, not through service, but through their access. And I think that is exactly what the Russians, not just the Russians, but the Chinese are looking for. They're looking oh. for people like that. Oh, my. My God, get, get the, if, uh, for the readers out there, for the people who are watching out there who didn't get that, that, the, what, that what these foreign intelligence services want are people who see their office as a chance to get access to information for the Absolutely. purposes of enriching themselves. Now, just think and do a thought exercise how many people that could theoretically apply to in the Trump campaign in the White House. It is scary. Malcolm Nance, Sarah Kenzior, Naveed Jamali, wow, thank you guys very much. Uh, meanwhile, some breaking news on hashtag boycott NRA. The American Air, the airlines, sorry, the, Amer the airlines.